episode 8, Spa Insider Interview with Sunshine for Soul, a Poulton Lefide, a Pink's Boutique Celebrated Spa. In this episode, Luke will be spending some time and interviewing Joanna Taplin, the owner and creator of the Pink's Boutique Celebrated Spa, Sunshine for Soul. This beautiful boutique salon is based in Poulton Lefay, just outside Blackpool um, in Lancashire. And Joanna has used Pink's Boutique products since she launched the business. It is quintessentially a Pink's Boutique celebrated spa, and she is completely dedicated to organic. Please listen to this if you are interested in opening your own salon. For those of you who live in the area and want to find out more about the spa, as Luke explores the story of how the salon came into being, how she set the business up, and her absolute attention to detail and genuine passion for what she does. Any of you that are spa and salon owners, it's well worth a listen to. So I'm here at Sunshine for Soul in Poulton, and I've come to interview Joanne, who has been with Pink's Boutique for three years now as part of her new venture, which is Sunshine for Soul, which opened in December 2014. And we promised when we started our podcast that we would come and educate everyone and tell them a little bit about how salons should really be run. So we've started with the boss. <laughs> we've started with somebody that epitomizes a Pink's Boutique salon when Kirsty and I envisage what one would look like um joanne has has managed to create that in spades and it's a fantastic place to come that really does add sunshine to the soul which is even more than impressive given the weather today (laughs) and the drive up the m6 to see joanne so without further ado i'm gonna let joanne introduce herself and let you tell a little bit about her story she's been in the industry for 20 years so you will definitely learn something so how did you get in to the industry well i mean from growing up really um i've always been interested from being a little girl my mum tells me that i was sat giving her pedicures when i was three four years old and when i was too young to wear makeup um she would gladly sit there and let me sit and put makeup on you know and uh i used to think she looked wonderful and then i'd go to bed and her and my dad would have a good giggle because she'd have one eye bigger (laughs) than the other and all this you know but um, We've got all this yeah, to but you know, I didn't pursue it at the time. Um, I didn't. I just carried on. I worked actually in fashion retail um, um, as a Saturday job. Worked from being fourteen, and it was just easier for me to carry on with that. Um, and it wasn't until I'd had my son that I decided, right, come on, go back to college yourself. So when he started school, I went back as a mature student to study beauty therapy. I took the highest qualification that I could at the time, which was a BTEC National Diploma in Beauty Therapy, and um, it was the best thing I ever did. Fantastic. And you were just telling me, because we're going to talk a little bit later about how you got into the organic route and, mm. and the lifestyle and how you rightly believe that impacts you know, the whole treatment. Mm. Um, but you were saying that you actually started not as a therapist, but in research yeah, and that. I, I was very lucky in as much as when I was studying um my beauty therapy um, course, uh, I was recommended to a very high-end local salon um, that they were looking for somebody to go on placement um, to work um, as a receptionist one day a week. Um, And she was so impressed with me that she actually paid me to go on a Saturday as well. And for me, it was, it's, it's the basics, it's the roots, it's being in reception, working looking at the products recommending them learning all about the ingredients that's that's really where my passion came from for looking at the ingredients and and you know what's actually in these creams and things although I was not into organic I was into the natural side of things then which is interesting because we always talk about retail in salons and um, for those salons out there listening you um you've got a lot to live up to to compete with Joanne, but I think it, that's where it comes from. If you if you listen to Leah and Joanne talk about products, it's knowing them from the ground up. You yeah, know, it's not just you know everyone likes the packaging, everyone likes the bottle, but when you're with a client and when you're in a treatment, mm. it's that extra knowledge that mm. I think stands a good therapist apart from say a retail environment. And yeah, when we started Pink's Boutique, it was about being complete fresh and organic, and that was because 
with Kirsty's training and with their expertise and the, and the therapist knowledge, you do get a far more complete appraisal and you know, set of products than you would just you know walking up to a counter. So that's what we believe in for Pink's Boutique. And so going on from just being interested in the ingredients and the mm. retail, when did you go further into it and start looking at? Well, I also studied on top of the beast therapies and aromatherapists so I started to really learn because aromatherapy is the very first medicine you know yeah. plants are medicine so from that point on um, and started to look at the impact it had on our bodies and how it has the ability to replicate hormones and 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 just seeing it as, as a medicinal thing something that treats you from the inside out and um, that's when my passion towards you know using natural ingredients because at the time in the salon we were working with a Japanese skincare range which it was all about nanotechnology for that range and it was extracting silk and proteins from silk and things like that you know and so I've had quite a lot of training from all aspects really from the pharmaceutical side to you know the more natural side but it when I really got into wanting organic and realizing about organic was it's a bit of a sad story I lost my father to cancer uh, and it was very rapid it was a throat cancer um, sadly my mum kind of panics um, I took over feeding him so bless him and I know you'll be laughing about this oh. I always found myself researching superfoods everything yeah. he was having goji berry soup <laughs> So, he was having all sorts first. of things. Yeah. And and it was through that research that I started actually looking at the skincare companies that I was working with, that I'd been trained and told were natural, 100% natural. Yeah. And maybe they were, but I'm quite sure the ground that the, the ingredients were grown in weren't. Yeah. And that's when I started making the connection, you know. Um, and, you know, when you've gone through an experience with cancer and somebody like most people have that you've lost somebody quite close, you're affected by other people's reactions and the questions that they ask. So, yeah. for instance, people are kind of quite interested in it and, and wanting to know what sort of a life my father led. Was he healthy? Did he drink? Did yeah. he smoke? Well, actually, he did drink and smoke. But also... For no more than anyone else. But also... Um, I would also hear other people's stories that they'd lost somebody that was just completely fit, health addict, never yeah. smoked, never drank. They ran, they ate healthy, but yet they'd been struck too. Yeah. And it made me think, well, if somebody's eating lots of fruit and vegetables, but it's non-organic, are they being healthy? Because really, when you eat an apple, there's at least 17 chemicals that have been absorbed by that one apple, yeah. you know? So it was just little things like that, because obviously food is medicine, what you eat, yeah. everything goes into the system. And it, and it made me want to protect my own family and look at all the cosmetics that I'm providing as yeah. a mum to my family to use. Um, so I started kind of being a aromatherapist, formulating a few bits and bobs and working with those on my clients. Um, and I'd got an anti-aging range together. I'd been using it for about a year. And then my daughter started school in the September. And then three months later, I decided this is it. And I opened up Sunshine for the Soul. Amazing. And of course, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't open the salon because there was all the other skincare um, types that I needed to look at. So I thought, right, I need to find a professional company. And I didn't want, I don't want to name any names, but I didn't want companies that the photographer next door could just open an account with and start yeah. selling um, or somebody down the road could just start doing. I wanted something made for, by professionals, for professionals, something that as a beauty therapist is a tool for me to use. Um, and it had to have the whole package, you know, because I am a little bit of a perfectionist. That's an understatement. So, <laughs> so when I was looking, I can remember that time when I phoned up and I was doing all my research and I, still, I kept seeing Pink's Boutique, Pink's Boutique. And I remember phoning up and actually Kirsty answered the phone and she must have thought I was a lunatic and I was asking her, firing all these questions. And... She was probably thrilled that someone was asking <laughs> the questions. And, and I was just, and I couldn't, there was treatments, there was this, there was that. And I was like, oh. And I was just thinking, please let these products when they arrive be good. Because that was the other thing, you know, yeah, is, you know, a lot of companies can do the talk, but they can't walk the walk. So when everything arrived with such attention to detail, perfectly wrapped, 
it was just an experience in itself opening that box of samples that were sent to me and then using them and I I can just remember phoning it up and I was actually I was actually in tears when I was speaking to her saying I want to open an account <laughs> and that was that it meant I could move ahead and I could actually open my dream salon um, and it was everything I envisaged I didn't need to even think about making an organic skincare because it had been done so just so perfectly by Pink Sweetique. Well, likewise, when we found you out, we knew we'd found someone that was going to go the extra mile and as a result has had huge success on the award oh. circuit, which is no surprise. Um, and only, obviously the products are a very small part of that. So tell us a little bit more about the process you've been going through first with Babchak. So Joanne has been runner-up, if I'm correct. I've been last, finalist, national finalist. finalist. In the last yep. two years for the yep. Babchak Awards. Yep. Um, and it's and it's a very big thing. I mean, it's a it's a big process, and again, going back to the attention to detail, it takes a lot of effort. There are industry awards, so yeah, it's just exactly. judged I mean, by professionals. It's like the Oscars of beauty, yes, yeah. Um, so, how's how have you been finding out? What are the challenges? What are the good? What are the upsides and what are the downsides? Well, I've entered different categories in the past. So, um, in two thousand and fifteen, I was very blessed to be finalist in two categories so that was small salon of the year and also beauty therapist of the year so so that was really great um it's a massive process you know you have to be trade tested and everything else that goes with it um, how long does it take from start to finish so so the deadline actually for entering is today on the okay. 28th of february so you kind of know about it from from the new year um and then everything's taken in and you kind of i think I think it's the first, by the first of May. If you've not heard anything, then you're no, not a semi finalist, no, no. and that's that basically. That is not good yeah, news yeah, reason. no, it's not. So, so yeah, so I've entered that again this year. Um, last year, I was um, I just entered the one category, which was new beauty business of the year, which um, I was a finalist for that as well. But also, I've entered um, and won award from Theopathetis for um, a business award for small business Sunday. Um, and I was also a finalist for Northwest um, Beauty Business of the Year for the EVA Awards, which is Women in Business, it's Enterprise Vision Awards. And, you know, entering the awards to me um, ensures that I'm operating at a really high standard. And I'd recommend it for anybody that's out there, really, that has a business, because the whole process of entering an award helps you really look at your business and evaluate it and make little changes and it's a, it's a really interesting point because obviously yeah. any business owner one of the challenges you know finding you know finding feedback basically you know honest feedback and the best feedback is your own so to take that time out to look at it from you know fresh eyes and say you know if I was a awarding body or if I was someone yeah. you know testing this how would I you know how would I find it because you know living in it every day sometimes lose sight of that yeah definitely it's a really good opportunity i know when we've entered awards it you know, just forced you to look at it from someone else's eyes yeah so that's obviously a, a benefit and obviously um you know the, the awards that come with it are great what about the downsides what are the challenges you know the cost well, of the business the, yeah, the competitors I mean, yeah it, i mean it is it's it's a it's a challenge because these things are always based in london you know yeah. the big awards and things um and but you know, it's it's just I, I do love to take a challenge on, and um, and for me personally, I like to try and be the best that I can be. So you know, I, I think it's too easy to sit back and remain stagnant. You know, yeah. it's good to get out there and see what everybody else is doing, um, and and it's always really great feedback. Like when I'm with people and I explain, like I'm the first eco salon in Lancashire that. Um, you know, there's no petrochemicals. Everything I have has to be certified organic. Um, mm. Obviously, Pink's Boutique, um, it's the creme de la creme. It's it's the highest certification in the world. It's Soil Association certified. Um, and for me, you know, once once I explain that to people, people just, you know, they high five me. They say, <laughs> it's really great what you're doing in industry. And um, they see it as an innovation, really. And is it... It's hard to say, but do you think it is slower in other regions? I mean, you being the first up here is obviously fantastic, but in other industries, food, for instance, is organic taking off? You know, in well, supermarkets or for me personally, take... obviously, I'm. This is how I am, and yeah. it's how I am at home. You know, and yeah. and, 
and it's not just about being a beauty therapist and a client coming in and making the skin look pretty it's about advising on the whole lifestyle change so it's somebody that's coming in they've chosen to come here and have organic because they have that interest but also they really want to learn so um I, I find them you know um asking about recipes and and all sorts of things really and cleaning, I'm happy to cleaning help products. yeah all sorts of things what do you use here what do you and and generally everybody's wanting to embrace the change you know and and it's just about educating people you know you get so many people coming in saying oh well I'm using such and such and it's paraben free and they think that's really great and when you explain to them that that is just a marketing yeah. tool that works yeah achieve. yeah in the last podcast if you listen we we discussed certification and that was one of the big challenges yeah. there's no uniform certification mm. for skincare certainly not in Europe yeah. and so you know, it is difficult to know, you know, which elements yeah. of it are marketing and which elements of it are, mm. you know, are genuine. And also what's easily consumed by the consumer, you know, it's difficult to explain everything in one go. Yes. So people putting, you know, power and free and, uh, and things is a, is a tagline, but it doesn't actually tell you much more about the product. Mm. But then on the flip side, trying to know the full range of, Soil association, yeah. accreditation standards is yeah. beyond most you know, retail consumers. Yeah. So, you know, we're constantly trying to find the right line. Mm. And that's why therapists are so fantastic because they have the time exactly with the client to yeah. go beyond just one line or a yeah. tagline and actually talk more about it. Um, and so you've been here three years? Yes, I'm well, not quite, not three, quite years. three years. I'm just in my third, yeah, third year now. Year. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, what are the hopes and dreams? For so I mean, soul? at the moment, what I do here is unlike a salon. So basically, you know, throughout my career, I've worked in really big salons. I've managed really big teams of therapists. Um, but I just wanted to break it all down because for me, I'm pretty old fashioned, and I think often what's missing in salon is the time given to clients. Um, so for me, I'm here, I offer a VIP experience. Um, I'm also trained in oncology uh, for beauty as well. So it's quite appealing to lots of different clients that they're going to come in and not actually see another soul. It's lovely to be able to offer them, you know, really beautiful organic treatment and you know the pink's boutique this is what appeals to me because it's like an escape to another world the treatments are just a pleasure to perform but ultimately for the client it's a pleasure to receive as well and they can just drift away so it's like entering another world um and yeah i just I, and i think they love it so i want to keep that feel um if i have plans to expand um, then you know that VIP experience will be remaining you know intact and and it's just more to encourage couples as in mother and daughter experiences. And that's a really interesting point from a business perspective, which is scaling a business and maintaining the quality is something mm. that's you know very difficult, to use, particularly in a service industry. Yeah. Um, watching the Dragons Den last night, they were looking at a business that they were basically saying they believed would fail the moment it became successful because they wouldn't be able to maintain the yeah. standard. It was in food delivery, so not food delivery. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, and we've, yeah. we've experienced this with some of our biggest customers. We're always really, really honest yeah. about um, what you what you gain from being big yeah. and what you lose. Mm. And obviously supplying bigger customers is great, but at the same time, mm. you know, you always look at it and think, you know, that how are they going to maintain yeah. the quality? And the truth is it's very hard to do. And so... Um, I, I appreciate that will be a challenge for yeah. you because I know you want to grow and that has huge potential. Mm. But at the same time, you have to yeah. manage expectations. Exactly. And, and we've had a number of salons grow and then, you know, change tack and reduce again and then grow again. Because it's if you're delivering that holistic approach, which mm. you do so expertly, presumably to grow, mm. you will have to clone yourself. Mm which is something entirely non-organic and GM. <laughs> Kirsty is desperate. In our family, Kirsty is desperate to clone herself. I think, I think that's it the only reason good. we have children. Yeah. She was hoping for a clone. 
Um, we cloned each other. We cloned the children. The children are both identical, but I don't know if they're identical to yeah. Kirsty yet. And yeah, that's one of the challenges because yeah. you know if you feel if you could find another version of you. Yeah. And, you, and presumably you do it tomorrow. Well, um, <laughs> I'm quite fortunate in the fact that, you know, one of my best friends, we've worked together years ago. I mean, you know, without making myself sound too old, but we <laughs> worked together, you know, like 20 years ago and we shared the same kind of principles. Same but, philosophy. You know, I'm, I'm not going to give too much away about my, my future no, business no, ideas. So I'm going to keep those no, well and truly course. under my belt. And the intention but, is there. But everything that I'm do, everything that I do here, you know, um, the extra time, the attention to detail, every single client, doesn't matter what they come in for, whether the treatment's an hour long, two hours long, they, I just really value them. Uh, they're so appreciated. I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, coming to a beauty salon is a luxury, you know? Yeah. It's a luxury thing, and it's not anything that therapists should take for granted. And in this day and age, when people give up their time, they should yeah. you know, feel like it's well spent. and Definitely. Certainly coming here, you get that full-on relaxation. To the, I mean, we were talking about attention to detail. Kirsty was saying that Joanne even, you know, cleans the room with a glass with a lime, goes around the... Yeah, and mint. And I thought she said she went around the room with a lime. I was, <laughs> I was, I was like, is this some sort of new tribal cleansing routine where Joanne skips around A new the grounding yeah, technique. Yeah, new grounding skips around the room with a lime. I was like... Why is she going around the room with a lie? That's what poor connection on the phone gets you. Um, but no, that's and that's exactly it. And from the, that sets the tone from the moment you walk in to allow you to spend that time thinking about yourself. Because, I mean, ultimately that's the job of a, a therapist is to give someone time to think about yeah. themselves. I mean, I believe that whether, I mean, you know, all my gift vouchers, they, they come gift boxed. You know, I, I believe that from the moment a client... Um, picks up the phone to make an appointment or you know they've been spoilt by a loved one and given a voucher the minute they look as far as I'm concerned as a therapist that's when their treatment experience begins from that moment their anticipation they're looking forward to it even if it's you know a little bit of a waiting list and they can't get in with me for a while they're looking right. forward to yeah, it and yeah it, and it's part of the healing yeah. process we've done a yeah. lot of research and that anticipation yeah assuming it's something you're looking forward to which yeah. in this case would be is part of the experience exactly and it's that's the holistic journey yeah, that they, they're on from that moment from the moment so. they know they're coming and yeah. presumably then the rebooking is easier because oh gosh yeah you know, they the moment and they think that it's going to end yeah. they're desperate for another one note to all you therapists out there that's the that's the point to nab them right at the moment definitely where, where they've just just enjoyed it and realized how important it is to them you know make sure you build their anticipation for their you know for their next treatment from clients that are regulars that come two or three times a month to clients that they just hang on for for anniversaries and birthdays because they know the husband or the loved ones are going to come here to buy a voucher and I see them two or three times a year and they're so excited every yeah. time they come you know um, and it's just it's just wonderful to think that they choose to come to Sunshine for the Soul so that's really nice and it's thanks to having such a beautiful and gorgeous skincare brand Pink's Boutique as well and and if I must say if I may say it's a pleasure to be involved with your business because i know you're only in the scale of the beauty industry a relatively young company how old are you personally no, no. <laughs> yeah, we're not discussing that today i've just had a birthday um, no, no, we're, I mean, we're eight nine years old nine this year years, nine years yeah. old officially we're eight years we've had the full range for eight years which yeah, it's getting on in some ways, but when you compare it to the larger exactly yeah you know they're all 30 plus years old now and also in the organic world still being relatively new then you know we like to think we're still innovative still doing new things um but also want to offer as joanne said that very you know traditionally you know strong therapist approach where very bespoke you know, yeah people yeah. really feel like they're being looked after i just can't um, recommend you enough to any therapists that are listening and looking to bring in you know right. and move forward an organic range it's very kind of when it comes to uh, one of our new ventures which we can't talk too much about we'll be getting Joanne on board because one of the things we think that's missing is the ability for therapists you know around the world to sort of fine-tune their skills oh. you know we think that you know for lots of reasons beauty therapy training has taken a different course in the yeah. last 
10 years. Um, and I think, you know, for some therapists that want to take it to the next level, you know, taking on Pink's Boutique is one route, but, you know, we think there's an opportunity out there to help them in other ways. So, yeah, we'll watch this space, but we have a, another venture on the go, um, which, yeah, hopefully will will bring some of that. To, that sounds to intriguing. That yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's the anticipation <laughs> we're talking about. Um, but but going back to treatments, pink to take aside, what um, what do you like doing the most? You know, what if you could do a treatment holistically, facials or body? Like, is there right? You know, is it is there, oh, is, is there a go to? If someone came in and said, "Yeah, I don't know. I need to, I need looking after. You know, I've had a bad day, but yeah, you know, they don't have a particular concern." Yeah, what would you? Where would you... For me, it's a Pink's Boutique signature facial every yeah. single time. I love it. <laughs> and people, you know, for, for me, it's a two-hour experience here. So yeah. and the way I say, you know, to them, it's just from the moment you come in, you know, you sit down in the most luxurious setting. I'm in, I'm in the chair as we yeah. speak. <laughs> um, I'm not, unfortunately, getting the said treatment. <laughs> Well, you've got yeah. some organic tea yeah, there. So, <laughs> so the beginnings. Yeah. and um, you know, and it's lovely because most often you arrive in salon, and you know, you've just the weather's against you, the parking's against mm. you, um, even the babysitter might have been yeah. running a bit late. So sometimes you often find as a therapist that it takes a client a while to relax so you might just about get to the massage and you feel them visibly relaxing whereas with the signature the two-hour facial yeah. they're greeted with a lovely organic tea and um, the the wooden uh, soaking bowl fresh herbs their legs are the feet are soaked and you know we can go through the client consultation without them even noticing because they're just sat there with all the beautiful aromas of the oils and mint and, and fresh herbs and everything and then by the time we start the treatment which begins on the back and then there's lots of our own therapy and um, hot steam towels and turn them over uh, initially when you say it's a two-hour treatment good god you can see their expression <sighs> but actually at the end of it they don't want to leave it's like it's mm. been two hours it's gone too quickly you know and it's just a pleasure you know it, it is it and it's sunshine for the soul. I have to get that in again. They yeah, just no, leave floating. Just so. the description of it's making me sleepy <laughs> um, and relax. But it is it is true. I mean, we talk about this element of you know, people sometimes feel bad about treating themselves, but it should be you know, it should be a prerequisite for looking after yourself. If you're not in a good state of repair mentally and physically, it's hard to you know live you know help other people that might need it or you know have a positive outlook. And, it's preventative, isn't yeah, absolutely. it? Absolutely, and that period of you know relaxation it does take a while to wind down um, yeah joanne and i laugh often because i think i persuaded her to buy a pair of blue filter glasses yes um, which is something <laughs> in kirsty's chagrin but um you know because winding down from stuff there's constant stimulation in the world whether it's blue screens late at night or social yeah. media you know and the idea of a place like this is to come and have that moment where you switch everything off and you know get some sunshine back in your life and that doesn't happen yeah. in 10 minutes there are you know maintenance treatments there are things that it's you, about reconnecting and yeah. grounding and realizing that you know we're surrounded by nature and we ourselves are of nature and you, we just need to reconnect with that so that's what it's all about really fantastic um we've gone on long enough I mean, I could sit and talk to Joanne for hours. She's <laughs> Likewise. She's been a fantastic guest. Um, we may well do a follow-up when we get some of our undisclosed plans up and running <laughs> um, to you know, let you know how things are going, do a catch-up. It's been a really fantastic trip up here. As Joanne says, Sunshine for Soul is the first eco-luxury uh, treatment centre in the Northwest, really, mm. and um, award-winning for very good reason and will continue to be so, I'm sure. So we look forward to seeing how this year's BabTech Awards go and generally following, you know, the progress of a fantastic business, which is everything, you know, we as a you know, spa brand would hope to be involved with, but more importantly, just as a person. It's been fantastic. Oh, that's very kind. Thank no, you, at all. So thanks for having us um, and we look forward to seeing how the future progresses but um, for those who've been listening thank you and we look forward to more of these you know, bespoke spa visits where we go and find out a little bit a bit about the industry how you actually go about delivering your know, world class treatments and the effort that goes into it um, so yeah happy listening and have a great day